Hello, America. I hate to stack one more thing on your plate, but this one is important. Russian Foreign Minister today said the United States must choose. Either we support Georgia or Russia. Oh, good heavens, man. Most people don't even know what this story is about. We shouldn't be surprised that Moscow is drawing the battle lines. They blew through the negotiated truce that I told you about just last night. They sent their tanks into strategic Georgian cities only, after, only hours after that little ceasefire talk happened. The story is far from over, and we are going to have to choose. So here's the point tonight. I fear Vladimir Putin is just getting started. This is part of the perfect storm that I've been telling you about for a while. The morgues are all full of his enemies, and now he is showing aggression towards a young democracy like Georgia, a country that is named streets after our president. Many are terrified to think who's next and what's next. I am proud now to be joined by the courageous president of Georgia, Mikhail Saakashvili. Um, Mr. President, uh, the last time we spoke, uh, you know, I am a, I'm a fan of yours. It was a happier time. Um, what is the status of your, your country Absolutely. today? Well, you know, last time we spoke, my country was a very uh, fast developing, prospering, um, uh, small democracy. Well, what we are having here is a huge tragedy. We have this small, tiny democracy under attack from a giant neighbor, Russia, under full-fledged attack basically the overwhelming force of uh, almost entire Russian land force, uh, more than 1,200 tanks, um, uh, more than 300 planes, uh, more than uh, 100 helicopter gunships have entered our small territory and has been, uh, they have been running around, um, the burning cities, destroying the villages, killing people, rampaging through uh, all kinds of areas, uh, blowing up the buildings, blowing up schools um, and uh, looting uh, I get reports of Russian army followed by regulars as we speak and are, are you, are, uh, going are, are, for... Uh, uh, will you verify, sir, okay, that, that they go have ahead. violated the truce then? Is this... Well, they never, they were never really adhered to the truce. They were running around. They closed the main bloodline connecting eastern and western Georgia. They got into town of Gori, which is uh, close to the capital. They've been uh, bomb shelling uh, residential areas in Gori. They've been demolishing buildings. Uh, things like, you know, they went and demo demolished the, uh, you know, for instance, the residence of local priests and uh, the, the whole area. And things like that, you know, they've been targeting. They, they hit a hospital with their tactical missile, which is, according to CNN, I, I didn't know it, qualifies as weapon of mass destruction. Um, so can, you, know, you, are, you are really dealing with 21st century barbarians. Can you, can you tell me this, sir? Russia is saying that they, are, they were just reacting um, to you last week. However, uh, I have talked to uh, military people who say moving two divisions, um, which they moved over the mountains, plus organizing the naval blockade, choosing targets for the Air Force, it was, it was reaction to you overnight. How is that even possible? They say this should have taken months they, to plan. That only means, absolutely, they, that, what, that, that only means that Russian tanks were already rolling. They were, we fired, we only, the whole thing started only after we fired back since we got reports that 150 Russian tanks as a first stage moved deep into Georgian territory. That was the moment when Georgia offered its uh, opened its defensive fire, but then thousand more or so tanks followed, and you know, they were rolling, and the infrastructure was pre has been prepared for months and months and months, and within hours, all these hundreds of tanks, and then lately, more than thousand tanks were inside Georgia running around. You, s you said today that um, the United States is taking control of the ports and the airports. What, what does that even mean? What, what are you expecting from us? What does that mean to you that we're going to do? Well, it's not about um, what, what, what has been happening here is that it's not the, what Russians have been doing. I mean, Russians, uh, it was a typical, you know, old style kind of war propaganda. Russia wanted to, uh, you know, depose the Georgian government. They didn't hide this fact. Um, so for several years, they've been 
harassing us for our mm -hmm. pro-American and pro-Western orientation. First, they introduced full-blown economic embargo. While well, we survived it, we still had double-digit growth rate. Then they started to bomb us from time to time. When we would complain to foreigners or to the world, they would say, oh, no, these are Georgians, paranoid, par they're paranoid, you know, or they painted their own planes and bombing their own cities. We are not doing that. We have nothing to do with that. They've been doing all, they've been supporting separatists in my country, arming them with heavy weaponry all the time. Now, what happened is that after we, we failed to, uh, they failed to replace us uh, through all these means, finally they did something they've done to Finland in 1939 when Stalin invaded democratic Finland, what they've done to democratic Hungary in 1956, what they've done to Prague Spring in 1968, and what they've done to Afghanistan in 1979. They started full-blown military intervention into Georgia with the purpose of deposing the government. So what, is, what that really means is that they, they basically closed our bloodlines, they bombed pipelines here, they bombed uh, our uh, port. For instance, uh, just to say, tell you, for instance, they went to the main civil port and they, they announced to the local mayor that they had to blow up, uh, blow up free, uh, free vessels in that port. And uh, so uh, from the air. And the uh, mayor, uh, you know, backed them, you know, that they knew how notoriously inaccurate their Air Force is. Please take them out to the sea if they, you really want to blow up the vessels and blow them up there. And then the final generous compromise of the Russians was to bring in explo on explosives and bring, blow them up in the port. This was one instance, you know, they've been, uh, they, they told the uh, oil, uh, oil terminal that they had to bomb them. They bombed uh, cement factories, they bombed railways, they bombed... Uh, purely civilian destination. So basically the purpose was to paralyze Georgian economy, to cut the bloodlines, to uh, destroy the Georgian army, and of course our army in comparison with them is like 20 times smaller, uh, to go after the Georgian government and to basically uh, end the Georgian independence. And you know, so basically what we, what we, it means now what the Americans are doing, because they've been cutting our bloodlines, uh, and their, our airports have been closed, our ports have been attacked. <coughs> Americans are moving in their ships into the uh, ports to, to open the, uh, the, to have the, to make them, uh, to have them open and to move in humanitarian supplies. They are starting something like airlift to the airport so that airport can function because mm -hmm. the Russians would not allow even, even foreign presidents to, to land at our airport. Uh, we, we have a new, very beautiful the international airport which they've been bombing for a few days. So basically, uh, what uh, this means, uh, the humanitarian assistance Americans are giving us, uh, it's, we are really grateful to the American people for that one. It cannot come in time soon. We are uh, well, uh, too soon because we are really having, you know, uh, 180 thousand displaced persons in a country of uh, for less than five million people. Mi it's huge. It's a huge humanitarian catastrophe. Mr. Mr. President, um, we're going to take a break here for a second and I, I want you to make the case to the American people because I don't think most people, um, they don't understand what this is even about. Most Americans um, don't know your name. I, I mean, I, I stumbled onto you about a year and a half ago and I was amazed. You're a guy who has cleaned up one of the most corrupt places in the world and, and your people, and I think I said this to you before when we were on, you sound, the words that come out of your mouth many times sound like a founding father of ours, but most people don't even know what this is about. So I wanted to have you speak when we come back directly to the American people and make your case. Why should Americans get involved? What does this mean to us? We're so bogged down all around the world. Make your case, Mr. President. We'll do that in next. Glenn Beck.